Hello, today is May 11th, 2016. I'm meeting today with Mary Lou Batman at her home in Pierce, Colorado. My name is Brad Hoops. I'm the interviewer for the Northern Colorado Veterans History Project. Welcome, Mary Lou, and thanks for sitting down today to, to tell us your story. You're very welcome. Hi. Let's start out, if we could, tell us a little bit about yourself, your date of birth, where you were born, a little bit about your family. Uh, my main name, I'm, my, my given name uh -huh. is uh, Mary Louise Grindle Batman. I was uh, born in uh, rural Dewey, Oklahoma. At where in Oklahoma? Dewey, D-E-W-E-Y, -E -E at my grandparents' home. And uh, my mother and father and my sister Leela uh, lived with my grandparents until we moved to Copan, Oklahoma which is between Bartlesville, Oklahoma, and Caney, Kansas. And I lived there until I went into the Navy as a wave. In the, on October the 22nd, 1944. Well, let, me, let me back up and, and I wanna ask you a few questions about your childhood, particularly with your generation. Uh, do you have, much memory, and if so, uh, was your family much affected by the Great Depression, compounded by the, the Dirty Thirties and what that was like? Could you talk a little bit about that time period? Uh, yes, I remember when the, when the Depression, we lived on a farm, and uh, we had a truck garden and an orchard, and we raised chickens and geese and old mean turkeys and rabbits and cattle and my father farmed with horses. We had two oh. white horses that he farmed with. And uh, we were in, we were all in, uh, engaged in the 4-H clubs and, um, and, did, and did community work when it, was, when it was needed. My parents always helped everybody. Mm -hmm. So I imagine like many farm families, during the depression, plenty to eat, but not a whole lot of money. I would, yeah, yeah. And uh, what about the Dust Bowl? Do you, were you near uh, in, in the thick of that at all? No, uh, we were fortunate because uh, we had a hill behind us in the, on the east side of our property. And uh, we picked blackberries up there and got chiggers. You know what <laughs> oh. chiggers are, I think. And, uh, but uh, I, we are ourselves, the farm was on both sides of the highway, and we really didn't have the Dust Bowl as bad as they did out in the country. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. More. Okay. So you went up and grew up and went to the school system there and graduated uh, Yes, high I school? went all 12 years to yeah. Copan uh, School. And what year did you graduate from high school? 1945. No, no, no. 1942. 42. 42. Well, let me back up and ask you a question. Uh, December 7th, 1941, do you remember where you were and what, what you thought when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Uh, yes, we were at um, my grandparents' home, and my Aunt Bessie and Uncle Wendell and Uncle Harry all lived with my grandmother. My father, grandfather had died. Mm. But my cousin, Junior Grindel, was in the Navy. And his boat, his ship, was in dock, getting repaired. And Uncle Wendell had the radio on. They were listening to a ball game. And he had the radio on, and that came through. And I remember Junior just turned as white as a sheet. And uh, so, and they had a telephone. So he called right away, and they said, just to stay put until we get a hold of you, because the ship wasn't quite ready to, to go, so oh, boy. Wow. it was, I'll never forget that day. I'll bet, oh, I can't imagine, wow. So you graduated from high school in 42. Uh, what did you do at, once you got out of, out of high school? I went to Bartlesville Business College and became a secretary at, uh, um, not Blue Gas, at City Service Gas Company in Bartlesville. I did bookkeeping and uh, secretarial work. Okay, 
and then I joined the Navy. Well, that, that begs the question. Here's uh, a girl from Landlock, Oklahoma, joining the Navy. Is it, was it because of your cousin, or what prompted you to join that branch of the service? Well, both, because I had, um, Junior was in the Navy, and the, my favorite cousin, Kenneth, had joined the Navy. And my daddy thought I would be better off in the Navy than in the, the Army. Oh, okay. But you had to be 20 before you could join the Navy. So they did everything that before my birthday, and then uh, I went to Oklahoma City and got my physical and got sworn in uh, on the 22nd of, uh, of 1942. Wow. So unlike uh, the men, your, your folks couldn't co-sign for you. You had to be you had to be of, of age. Yeah, to, you had to be uh, I had to be 20, 20 uh, as opposed to 18. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then, how, from there, how much longer then before you shipped off to whatever training or? Uh... Well, it was in. It was about the week before Christmas. Um, where I went to Coffeeville, Kansas, and caught the train, and uh, and went to uh, New York City. Oh. Uh, I kept the college. Where we, where did we go? Because it was cold. And that's where the. Columbia? Uh, no. Uh, what else is in New York City? Well, that's fine. Yeah, it'll it'll come to you. Yeah. Well, that, what I can't imagine. Once again, here's this this country girl from Oklahoma in New York City. That that must have been exciting, or was scary, or what was it for you? Well, both. It yeah. was exciting because we went from I went from Coffeeville, Kansas, to Kansas City. And we met a, a train of women that were going to Hunter College in New York City. And uh, we went around the Great Lakes, and that was uh, about the only year that had been frozen. So we saw the Great Lakes frozen. Wow. Then we got into Hunter College, and oh, it was cold. Wow. And I imagine, like many of your generation, you know, growing up, you really didn't travel too far away from home. So that was probably, was that your first time away from, really away from home? Or? No. Uh, when uh, I when I was in 4-H, I went to Kansas City, and uh, to the stock show that they had a, and uh, and then I went several places in Oklahoma with the um, uh, with on the 4-H group. Now now when you went off. Uh took off for the waves. Did you go alone? Did you have any friends go with you or was it, uh, were you pretty solo? No, my sister and a friend went to Coffeeville with me uh, and saw and gave me some chocolates to get on the train. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as enlisting, you, you enlisted by yourself. You didn't go with any friends? No, or... I just went by myself. Wow. I was working at City Service Gas Company and, and I went on the bus to Oklahoma City. Well, let's move ahead to your, your story. You, you arrive in New York City at Hunter College. I'll take yeah. your story from there. And, and uh, then uh, when, uh, we, when I finished there, I was sent to Stillwater, Oklahoma, for um, yeoman training or secretarial training. And then from uh, Stillwater, I went to Corpus Christi, Texas. Now, how long were you in, in like, New York City? Uh... I, I don't remember. Oh, okay. That's fine. And still other in, in Corpus Christi, and that's where you had your assignment then in Corpus Christi? Yes. Or, uh, okay. I was assigned to, I was in the radar tower. Wow. As a, as a secretary. That's where I met my husband. Oh, really? Yeah? <laughs> yes. well, tell, tell that story, how you guys met. And... Okay. Well, I was, uh, I was at the desk in the, in the, what well, was almost like a hall, but I was in the desk, and he come, coming through, I shouldn't say this, but he was teaching radar to a group of fellows that weren't listening or weren't coming or something. Uh -huh. He wasn't very, he was pretty upset with them. <laughs> so he comes storming through and he turned around and he looked at me. Jane introduced me to him and he went on into the, what they had, the break room. And then pretty soon he came out and visited with me and pretty soon I just kind of, we just kind of fell in love, oh. I guess. <laughs> So it was, uh, it was good. Uh, how long did you guys date before uh, you got engaged and married then? 
it was about six months. Is that yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And where was he from? Uh, he was from uh, old Colorado. Oh, okay. So that'll uh, answer why how you ended up in Colorado. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So talk a little bit about uh, about life down in Corpus Christi in, in the Navy and what you did, what your uh, what your job duties were, and your living conditions, and what you guys did when you weren't on duty. Just daily life as a uh, as a wave. Okay. Well, we have. Um, we had barracks, and there was four um, beds to a, a cub of, of, what do they call it anyway? There was, we had four bunks, mm -hmm. and um, very strict. You, beds had to be made just right, and nothing could be this is bad and that. And uh, we had, a, in front of our barracks, we had a big marching uh, area, mm -hmm. but um, I never did I never did go on kitchen duty I went on night duty we had to and that at, we did that in uh, um, New York too uh, we had to have slippers and a flashlight and you went all over the building um, and you did that at uh, Corpus Christi and it was your duty to wake whoever was supposed to be up but we only did that about once every two weeks and uh, then I, we walked on the base, of, um, and uh, so then I, I just did secretarial work until I, uh, then when the war was over, um, I was transferred to the, uh, um, oh, discharge center. Oh, okay. And, and help fill Process. out, we did papers there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then I, we came home, or we came to my, to Copan, Oklahoma, in December of 45, and we were married, and uh, and I went, and we, and Frank Arthur was out, out of the service. He'd been in for over four years, but he, uh, he was discharged, and then uh, I was discharged in, in the February of 46. But we were married in December the 24th of 45 at my home in Copan. Okay. And so uh, getting back to, to life in, at, at Corpus Christi, and how, how was that transition going from civilian life into military life for you? Was it much of a transition to... I'm sure it was because yeah. I had always, might say, lived a protected life. Yeah, right. And uh, so it, uh, but it, it was good. And when I was in, in New York, uh, there was two girls from Boston and one from Arkansas that was in my, we called them cubby holes. Okay. That's what uh -huh. they were. Uh -huh. And uh, so when we had leave twice while we were in, um, in boot camp, and they took me with them. Their mothers came down from Boston and took me with them, and we went to see um, Oklahoma and the Rockettes. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Oh, wow. <laughs> Boy, I just can't imagine. Like I said, I just can't imagine this, this country girl in New York <laughs> City <laughs> and and. Uh, well, and s s uh, somebody I think it was on that other interview. Um, if the people noticed you, well, if you didn't have a uniform on, you were just not there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, were you were you guys in uniform? Oh, yeah. We oh, okay. Were in uniform. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and so uh, uh, up in New York City, it was boot camp. I mean, did you actually have like uh, drills and the such? Or was it more more uh, ed, uh, training, uh, uh, schooling, and, and or a combination of both? Or both. Okay. We had both. Yeah. And then and then you moved down to Oklahoma and then Corpus Christi. Did you have any say into where you were going to be transferred or what you were going to do, or you just were just? No, they just told you. Okay. Okay. And then down in Corpus Christi, uh, what what would you guys do for entertainment when you weren't on duty? What would what? We had a lot of uh, of good shows that came through. You know, like USO type yeah. shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And um, and then the we um, could take the bus to the uh, Gulf ah. and and swim. Or with the jellyfish weren't there, we could swim. And then one of the girls. Um, 
that from New Orleans had a car. So we'd uh, check out fishing um, lines and, and stuff and uh, go to well, we're down on the bay, on uh, the bay in uh -huh. and if we caught fish, we usually gave them to somebody that was there fishing. Uh, so that was always fun. Oh wow! Uh, and we had a real nice church chapel that um, that we could go to, and we could check out bicycles, tennis rackets, anything like that. Uh -huh. Oh wow! Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, the waves were a relatively new program. I mean, you were you were more or less one of the pioneers with. Uh, women in the military was that uh how was that were you treated differently than the men uh, did you ever, how was well, that time period of, i mean like i said you, you were kind of a trailblazer it was we still had to have the law that you rules that you followed uh-huh uh -huh. yeah and uh and, and we we didn't march as much when we were in corpus christi because we all had a job to do, and uh, so, that so how roughly how long were you down in Corpus Christi? A couple of years, or uh, yeah, about um, about two years. Two years, yeah. And was there any chance of uh, you ever being transferred overseas, or any op opportunity there, or not at that not at yeah. that time? Yeah, and your husband never got transferred overseas. He he was there the whole. Yeah. No, he was. He was in the South Pacific for four years. Oh, oh, geez. Uh, prior to meeting you or, or after you guys met? Uh, no, that was before. Oh, before. before. Okay, so he'd come he, back. And he enlisted and uh, and didn't go to boot camp. He passed all these tests, and he didn't have to go to boot camp. But he went to San Francisco, and they had to wait to, to they didn't get to come home or anything. They just, they took him, he says, on a slow boat to China. Hmm. And uh, so he was over there for four years. And where, you know, let's talk a little bit about your husband's uh, story then. So where did, where was he stationed uh, throughout uh, the Pacific? Or was he on a ship? No, he was, uh, he was land, uh -huh. uh, airplane. Oh, okay, in the air control. Oh. I should have looked those up. Th that's fine, I? that's fine. But just several that uh, that he was on, and, okay. and they they he was radar with the airplanes. Okay, so after his service overseas, he came back to Corpus Christi, and, and he was an instructor, correct? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, of all the, I mean, I can't imagine you. There was a whole lot of women on that base, so uh, and there had to be a lot of sailors. How did, how did you come to, how did, I mean, I'm sure you were propositioned and asked out all the time. How did you, of all the sailors, how did you choose your husband? How did? <laughs> well, I, I don't know, but when he walked through and, and looked at me and I looked at him, and I thought, hmm, I kind of liked him. I guess he kind of liked me, and that's what happened. But because there were several that, um, that I enjoyed uh, one was from Oklahoma, and we played tennis. And I was trying to think where the other fellow was. I can't remember him now, but the one from from Oklahoma, because uh, we play, I played tennis with him. Uh -huh. But there was just something about my husband. Oh, I'll be darned. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Well. Do you remember um, VE Day and VJ Day? Was there celebrations on the base? Uh, we had to stay on base. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, and he, um, they just thought it was best for us. And then the day or two afterwards, they let us off base, and and um, and we celebrated then. Uh -huh. We had uh, a, a two real nice restaurants there. One restaurant had a, a hostess that was there when. Uh, when my husband was in Corpus Christi the first time, hmm. and you no, know, he went to Corpus Christi then, you know, and uh, but she was amazing. She could remember a lot of those people's names when they came back. She would remember their name. Wow. And uh, and she did his. She and his his mother fell in love with my husband too. <laughs> she was a, a, an elderly lady, and, and she thought he was just pretty good. So he, I went to their house some too to, to visit. Uh, uh, 
Wow. Yeah. So your husband got out, uh, was discharged before you. So did he come back to Colorado, or did he stay around uh, Corpus Christi until you got out? Or yeah, he stayed. Uh, he stayed down. Um, no, he finally got to come. I was trying to think if he got to come home. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. But I know I when I came here as a bride, nobody knew me. Now my family had met him. Um, mother and daddy came to uh, Corpus Christi to visit, and uh, my sister had come down, but they none of them had met me. <laughs> so wow. I. But his. his I would say his father said um, when he loved me or hugged me, you know, yeah. and he said, I knew that my son would pick out a good woman. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I was, I was very blessed with, yeah. with his family yeah. and with the community. They all just kind of accepted me like I'd been here forever. Oh, wow. And so that was great. Yeah. So, uh, Let's take your story forward now. So you're married. You move up here to, to Colorado. Uh, you guys settled here in Pierce or in Alter? No, we uh, about a mile and a half east of Pierce. That's well, close to two miles. Um, we lived on a farm, and we farmed for um, for a long time. And um, he uh, then he helped. He ran the elevator for. Um, the grain elevator for many years, and I went to work at um, Van Huy's uh, garage for a while, and then I worked at. Um, uh, did I go to work? <laughs> Adamson's mortuary, and then I went to work for the government with the um, uh, merit system at the social services uh, in uh, Greeley. We had four children, and uh, the youngest was in college when I went to work. No, no, I worked a little while before Richard graduated. So you pretty much were a homemaker yeah. and raised the children, and then once they left the nest, then you went back to work. Went back to work. Yeah. Uh, and how long were you and your husband married? 68 and a half years. <laughs> he passed away the 27th of July of 2014. Oh, boy. So, yeah, it's yeah. been, it's his pictures in there. Oh, wow. Uh. <laughs> so it's, some days I keep thinking, and then I, I thought, no. He says, he tells me, quit thinking, Mom, you know that I've, and, and he lived a lot longer than the doctor thought he would. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and, uh, so four children, uh, grandchildren, great-grandchildren? I have uh, five, let's see, nine grandchildren. No, 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 that's not many. Jaron and Jacinda, Maya, Aaron. there no I had it all figured out the other day and now I'm, I'm all mixed up again I've got more grandchildren great-grandchildren than I do grandchildren yeah there's uh, Greg and Gary Gary Garmin six grandchildren and uh, nine great-grandchildren Wow <laughs> hmm. I have um, three doctors in the family Is that, that right? are great-grandchildren, and two are in uh, my my one grandson and his wife are doctors in Australia. Oh wow! And um, Melinda is a uh, uh, Greg is uh, works for the government. He's in uh, the embassy part of the country. Oh. And Melinda is a doctor. His wife is a doctor. So. Uh, have you had an opportunity to travel down to see him? No, not. To, I have to. They're at um, in the Washington D.C. area. Ah. And so I've 
I got to go there to see them. But I didn't, I've never got to go to Australia. Uh-huh. And it's too far for me now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah right. Right. Well, through the years, uh, did you ever keep in touch with uh, some of the gals you served with? Was there any sort of reunions, anything like that uh, through the years? Yes, I kept in touch with the Frances from Boston until she passed away. And then her daughter uh, wrote to me several times, and then all of a sudden I don't hear from her. Hmm. But um, I still hear from three of, um, of uh, Frank Arthur's buddies at Christmas time. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, wow. and then one of them sent me pictures, little those little tiny pictures, you know, that need to be. Uh-huh. Uh, well, Bob sent those. He thought that his dad would like for me to have them. No, he thought, yeah, because his dad had died quite a while ago. So the family, and we did visit that family in Philadelphia. Mm. We were back there. Mm. But, uh, so we've, we've got, we've got, quite a bit of traveling. Yeah, yeah. And now we have, Gail is a, an army retiree from a colonel. He was a colonel when he retired, and he lives in Coppers Cove, Texas. And then Carmen works for the uh, um, computer company, and she's in the San Diego area. And then uh, Gary lives down the street, G-E-E-R-Y, is a daughter, and her husband, is a retired, uh, he was in the Air Force, and uh, Gary's a school teacher. And John volunteers all over the place now. And then Richard lives in Alt, and he works for CSU ah. at, uh, in Fort Collins. Yeah. Oh, good. So mm-hmm. all fairly close, yeah, most of them. Yeah. Yes, yeah. which is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, as, as we kind of start to wind down this, uh, this interview, Mary, is there anything I didn't ask you that you wanted to talk about uh, or any other stories that have kind of floated to the top as we've been sitting here? I know we probably only got the tip of the iceberg or your story, but hopefully round it out as best we can. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about during that that time period or uh, any time in your life, really, that we didn't talk about? Oh, well, I've always felt that I've been loved and... um, and, and and love people too. I uh-huh. try to not judge people. Uh-huh. And uh, but I, I have. It's been a, a good life. Has it? Yeah. We've had some. We've had hail when we were on the farm. Oh. We lost our crops, but uh, we always came before, and we um, always had a garden here in at the farm also, and uh, I. Uh, I can't think of much else. I yeah. just uh, am healthy. I had my turns of falling, but I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> 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 so I'm doing. I'm doing real very well right now. Oh, good, good. Well, the last question I always like to ask in these interviews: When you look back on that period of time uh, when you were in the Navy. Did it change your life, affect your life, play a role in your life? Or was it simply just a chapter in your life that you went through? How, how would you ask, answer that, do you think? I think it was a good chapter. Because I said, and I was, I was protected. And, mm-hmm. well, and it gave me a chance, and it would give other young women a good chance to be on their own and learn how to do things and, how, and meet other people from all over the world. Oh, really. right, right, mm-hmm. right. So, and my family have been, have been wonderful. Yeah. Now, when you, you say that it was, uh, you know, you came from a sheltered life, was that was that much of an adjustment uh, for you once you got out in the real world, or did you, did you grasp it and run with it, or how, how was that, once again, that transition really from a sheltered life to... This out, barracks yeah. with, with all these people? I had... I, the girls that I made friends with were very good people. Yeah. And uh, so I, it was a change, but it was a, it wasn't, it wasn't a homesick change. Oh, wasn't. Oh, good. No, oh, no, good. I, I good. did fine with that. Yeah. And your and your parents both embraced the idea because I know I've interviewed other women in the military and 
I, I know one woman was actually shunned by her church for joining. So, but uh, but uh, but your your parents were were all for uh, you joining the service and. Yes, they were, and I had an aunt uh, that joined the wax. Oh, really? Oh. She was just eligible, just was eligible, uh, and she joined the wax. Huh. She had a son that, uh, or they had a, her husband died. She had a son that was in the Navy. Wow. I kind of forget that, and all of a sudden I yeah. think, oh, I remember John R. Uh, wow. Boy, definitely heavily uh, involvement in your family with the military and, and service to this country for sure. Yes, we yeah. have had because wow. my daddy was in World War One. Really? Uh huh. Uh, now, would he ever talk? Did he ever talk about his experiences at all? The... Not too often. Um, but he and my um, brother-in-law, uh, who passed away just a couple of weeks ago. Hmm. Um, he talked to, to Rex about things, and Rex would talk to Daddy about things that that happened, because he was, Daddy was in Germany when the, with the mustard gas and oh. all that, so, uh, and my brother-in-law was in uh, the Battle of the Bulge. Oh. So we've had quite a... Huh. Mary Lou, I want to thank you for sitting down to tell, tell your story today, but uh, more importantly, I want to thank you for your service to our country. You're very welcome. <laughs> it was it was a bad situation, but it was an honor to be able to serve. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Mary Lou, uh, since we uh, did your initial interview, uh, you had thought of a couple things that you really wanted to uh, thought felt were important to add to your tape. So I'm going to just open it up to an open mic, and and you can talk about your grandchildren and and your uh, your volunteer work uh, and any other stories that you want to add to to the tape. So it's all yours. Okay. I uh, need to add my five grandchildren. I have uh, Gail. Yuri, Gary, Greg, and Jill, and I have nine great-grandchildren, and uh, I get to see, most, I get to see three of them, or five of them, um, pretty often, which is good. Oh, good. But I thought, I, uh, during my uh, working years, I was an eligibility technician at Will County Social Services. But I did a lot of volunteering even when I was working. I have enjoyed the many people that I have met and the good feelings that come from helping others. Uh, my volunteer work over the years have included the Pierce Methodist Church, the Pierce Senior Center, United Methodist Women, 4-H Skirts, 4-H, 4-H Boy Scouts, uh, MYF, and RSVP, the Area Agency on Aging, and the local schools. I feel very f fortunate to have been able to help others, both old and young. And you talked about how many hours altogether that you've added it up one do time. I need to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, this year I was honored by uh, having, do, having turned in 4,481 hours with the uh, area on agency huh. and on aging and I've had several other honors to age area on aging with through the well county uh, programs so the, the 4,000 hours that's just with the the aging agency yeah. that's not including your other stuff no, no that's on my, my sleep wow yeah we write it down and uh, and then they give us and these uh, two of those over there one's mine and one's art from one other year. Yeah, so volunteering was very important to you. Yes, very yeah. important. Yeah. And uh, I have good neighbors that help me now when I need something done. Uh -huh. And my children are very, mm -hmm. very good. Yeah. Is there any? And I feel very good to have good health and be blessed with 
with love and, and caring. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Lou. <laughs>